Hello and welcome back to the channel. This week's video is going to be, as I always try and do, going to be slightly different and it's going to be around plants to use in the shrimp tank, uh, specifically but not entirely just for caradina. So I'm going to have a look at some neo caradina options as well and talk about the reasons why I use the plants that I do and and why I don't heavily plant tanks and the reason I do the things that I do. So we'll go and have a look at that. So let's start with this tank. So this tank's got an Anubius. I'm not sure of the species. Uh, it is literally just on sand, so this is a neo coal tank. And I've also got snails in there, so as you can see from the bottom, I've got some batik snails. So we do sell these and the pink ram's horns. They're not on the website as yet. I've given them some calls yet, and they've obviously found that. So one of the things that I do, or try to do is I try not to plant into the substrate. I know this one's just sand and I've only got this Anubius in here that's on a coconut shell. And the reason I don't plant into into soils or sands is just simply because I want to be able to move stuff around and having things on objects such as wood or coconut shells in this case or bits of rock allows me to do that. So this plant here is in the soil, but it's a cryptocarini. I'm not sure what species it was given to me. And I did have it on a, um, a ceramic ring, just sort of floating around, but it does drop roots. I'll put it into this tank just to see how that goes. And then in the back, you can see some Bucephalandra. I think that one's Kedagang, and that's just pushed into or glued onto a piece of wood. In the background, you can also see some plant. This grows quite heavily, and I use that for cover more than anything. It can be planted. It's called hornwort, and it, it gives you a sort of um, a, a feel for the tank. It does grow really quick. I do have to thin it out a lot, but it, it helps with baby survival rates in my in my case or I believe it does and if the ends sort of go yellow then it, it's a sign of sort of depleted soils or it's not getting enough light so it is a bit of an indicator so that one's hornwort and I treat it as a floating plant. The next plant that I use is salvinia so this is a floating plant and it sucks up excess nitrates but again it grows really really quickly so you need to thin this out I don't use this in all tanks. I do use it in tanks where I seem to have an algae issue because it cuts down the light. So moving on then to this tank. Reflection's quite bad here. This is another type of Bucephalandra, so this is wavy green. This one is on a piece of lava rock and this has obviously grown quite quick. And then in the background there, you can just about make out I have some moss. I'll come back to mosses. In this tank that's cycling, we've got some more of the hornwort. In here, I've got some Anubius chili, which is quite a rareish plant. Tropical, we're doing a special on that. I've also got another type of Anubius there, and I'm not sure what it is. And I do have a bit of moss in there, and I will come back to mosses. So in this tank, I've got quite a few. So I, I know the one in the centre of the screen is a crypto. I'm sorry, it's a Bucephalandra apple leaf, and I've got some other types of booths, and I can never remember the names. I should label them. Likewise, on this piece of wood at the side, we've got again. I believe it's an apple leaf and another type, and then one in the front here that's on specially made pad so this is a rarer type it's a red something and again i can't remember the name but uh Bucephalandra, this one's on a, a, a pad and i believe that pad's made of akadama and then sort of resin together so this has probably got too many plants in but i like to sort of have stuff that i can move around if i need to then moving down to this tank which needs its glass cleaning We've got another Anubius and that and some moss in the back. And that Anubius is a mini coin. So again, a Tropica special is quite nice, that is. If we move on to mosses then, I've got 
in most of my tanks flame moss and the reason I use flame moss is because flame moss grows upwards and doesn't attach to anything and I've got a piece of flame moss there as well it gives juvenile shrimps places to hide and feel safe and secure and um, I do use uh, uh, I only really use flame moss that's a moss type you know like java moss and stuff and I mean you can use them you can use weeping moss java moss Christmas moss Taiwan moss but they all attach to things whereas the flame moss doesn't it doesn't sort of attach to things and you can probably see there that I've used a bit of choller and planted something on it so while we're talking about flame moss then if we go down to here I've got flame moss there probably needs a trim and as you can see on the bottom it's attached to something likewise the one that we moved on from over there and I just wanted to show you what those are so let's bring that up here so these are moss domes um, they're made by superfish I don't sell these um, I haven't got a superfish account but they separate so they split into two I'll just do that for you so they split into two you put the moss on this bit and then you sort of press that down they click into place and you put that in it just gives you a nice little holding I say I don't sell them but I really like them I think they're really really good and they're sort of good for mosses and stuff if you want to move those around then if we move down to my galaxy tank we've got a nice piece of lava right there with Kedagang I've had this one quite a while uh, probably 12 months or so three little pieces of Kedagang out of a one two grow pot and it's done really well the, the reason I like boost is because it, it it's pretty hardy it doesn't require massive amounts of light or co2 and it just steadily grows um, the shrimp sort of go in and out of it and then on the top there i've got some another one so this is just a couple of little cuttings off a rare boost which i believe was green screen something i can't remember the name i do know it if i remember the name before i put the video out i'll put a little pop-up note on here and uh sort of remember the name of that it's sorry it's dark tears so there are a couple of cuttings of a boost called dark tears and now literally just the rhizomes glued onto a bit of rock and hopefully that sort of takes off but that's slow growing as well it's been in the tank probably three months four months maybe moving over to my mix tank then i've got another couple of boosts on some some rock i believe the large one is called titan and there is a thin leaf boost on the other side of that i can never remember the name of that i've also got another boost here on a piece of lava rock that hasn't done extremely well and believe it or not that piece there is probably two years old and it's just never really took off but it hasn't died so hopefully we can sort of get something done about that. I could potentially move it into a tank where I've got CO2 and, and, and I feed that is in a shrimp tank and get that to take off. I do want to talk about Subwasatang moss that's at the bottom. So I used to be a real fan of Subwasatang, but the problem with it is it's brittle. It breaks off and this it just gets everywhere. So I've got Java moss at the back there. If you can just make that out. Let me see if I can zoom into that. So that's just Java moss. And again, it's not something I like because it just takes over the tank. This sub tank, I thought I'd got every bit of it out. And it, it's just invasive. So I say, I used to be a big fan of sub tank, But what I've noticed is when I had big, massive pieces, I was losing shrimp. And I don't think it was the sub tank that did it. I think it was the fact that there were just dead spots in the tank. And that's another reason, especially in my Caridina tanks, why I'd much prefer to just have things I can move around. So if I need to reset a tank, I can take them out and do what I need to do there. If we move over to the pure black line tank, I do have a piece of moss there, but I'm not sure what it is. It came in the bag with the, with the shrimp. And because they were sort of used to it, I put it in their tank and we, we, we sort of went away with that. And then this is the tank, actually. Let me see if I can move stuff out of the way. This is the tank with the floating plants. So they offer sort of good hiding places and biofilm and somewhere to munch and stuff with the roots. 
Now you can use other floaters like red root floaters. Uh, I've never done well with them personally, but red root floaters are quite good. Um, frog bit is quite good, but I'm not a massive fan of frog bit because it puts really long shoots down. And although they're good for hiding, they're very brittle. So if you sort of lift a piece out or take some out, they break up in the tank. Hence, I'm not a fan. Um, I have used them. I do, I do like them for sort of other type of scapes and stuff, but I'm um, just not a fan for the shrimp tank. Another type of moss that I use, I think some people call it phoenix moss, but it's, uh, it's Ficinans fontanus, and it does attach, but it sort of grows and it sort of weeps across. It's really nice with the fronds. Uh, I sold a massive piece of it, actually, and this is just a little bit left over. Then on the back there, we've got Anubius nangi, so these are just glued onto a bit of driftwood. And then, as in most of my tanks, and I've got to be careful that the sub on there doesn't get everywhere, we've got some wavy green or a, or a type of boost on, on a rock. So these are in a planted tank or in a soil tank. These are in a gravel tank with my orange neos. And these are two rare rabooses. So the one on the left is Metallica and the one on the right is Purple Rain. So when I bought these, they were classed as immersed, i.e. they were grown out of water and they were green. And once they submerse, they get full, full colour. So the green leaves that you can see, it's transitioning from immersed to submersed. Two really, really nice boosies. But the theme goes throughout, you know, the fact that we've got that one's flowering actually. The fact that we've got boosies or plants attached to driftwood or, or stone or something similar. My Amano tank, the same. So I've got a piece of uh, rock in there, but that hasn't got anything on. Uh, and again, I'm careful which rocks I use. So in my shrimp tanks, I only realistically use, especially in my Caradina, volcanic rocks such as lava rock or dragonstone. Um, just because they're inert and they don't affect water chemistry. And on here I've got, um, I believe that's um, Malawi, a Malawi boost, a clump of Malawi boost that I've attached to that rock. So this is my big piece of flame moss that needs cutting and trimming down. There's a lot of diatoms on there since it's been put into this tank, but I, I sort of use that as my base and pull a bit off that and put it into other tanks as and when I need to. So the last one is in my blue bowl tank. This is called hooker moss or hookeracea, uh, distillophyllum hookeracea or something like that. And it comes on mesh pads. So you usually buy it on a stainless steel pad. It does spread, but it stays pretty low. One of my favorites. So to summarize then, Caradina tanks, I'd recommend using plants such as Bucephalandra, Anubius, uh, mosses, uh, but specifically mosses that you can move around either on mesh pads or flame moss that doesn't really attach to stuff. Um, Fissidens I usually put on a piece of driftwood or a piece of chala or something like that just so it sort of fountains out and looks nice but you can still move that and trim that and do what you need to do with that. In my Neocaridina tanks I pretty much do the same but that's just the force of habit. You can sort of plant in a bit more detail with neo caradina tanks and do scapes and stuff, but that's how I keep them to breed them and, and we do sell them. And um, the reason we don't heavily plant the caradina tanks is simply because by heavily planting the caradina tanks, what you're doing is you're taking the, the power of the, the, the buffering substrate away, you're de depleting the minerals and the the nutrients in that that help to buffer your water so this is why we don't heavily plant our caradina soils just simply because you want them to last as long as that you can they're quite expensive you want them to buffer for a year or two or even more and by heavily planting uh, an active soil you're depleting its sort of lifetime or you're shortening its lifetime so that's sort of the end of the video for this week i hope you found it informative and useful and take stuff away from that if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber or not, smash that like button because it massively helps us to grow the channel. So until next time, and thanks again for watching.